Joe Eichley, Extension Weed Specialist at North Dakota State University. Up here at one of the sheriff farms today in Grand Forks County, uh, no-till field day uh, up here. And one of the roles I was talking about is weed control and no-till, uh, particularly for those who might be transitioning from conventional till to no-till. Uh, some of the differences you can expect in weed control, maybe weed species shifts, different tactics you need to, uh, to work with in order to achieve weed control, and also gave an update on some of our herbicide resistant weeds across the state, primarily uh, kochia and water hemp. And so for that first part about just a weed species shift and different tactics, uh, one of the main things when we shift from conventional tillage to no tillage is we need to replace that primary tillage pass in the spring, in this case with a herbicide application for most of our acres, to control those weeds when we plant our crop. And so that's just uh, some uh, robust herbicide burn down program. So we talked through some of the different programs that are out there and available, strengths and weaknesses on, on certain weeds. So that made up a part of the talk today. Uh, talking about weed species shifts that you might see occur in a no-till system. Uh, mare's tail or horseweed is one of our biggest weeds that can be an issue in no-till, but not in conventional tillage. Pretty shallow rooted weed, but it is glyphosate resistant. And so when we use a glyphosate based burn down program in the spring, we can often see failures and that weed will be problematic in no-till. Uh, so talking about different strategies, using burn downs in the fall to control mare's tail, very effective option for us rather than relying on a spring burn down alone. Uh, so that's one of the weeds we discussed. Uh, we also talked about things like uh, perennial weeds, like dandelion. Uh, we'll see a prevalence of more dandelion issues in no-till uh, because it's a, a taproot perennial. And so we're not having that tillage to disturb what's there and then we need to manage dandelion as well. So again, different strategies on fall versus spring burn down and, and some different options for that weed. Uh, then we, we shifted gears and talked about resistance updates with kochia and with water hemp uh, because since we're basing a lot of our weed control decisions in no-till around that burn down application, very important herbicide pass for us in no-till. And with kochia, we do now have uh, populations with resistance to our group 14 herbicides. Uh, trade names of, of products in that group will be Sharpen and AIM. Uh, very popular traditionally uh, products for us for controlling kochia in a burn down situation. But we do have some populations with resistance to that class of chemistry. So basically discussing knowing the populations you have of your weeds, because uh, that may drive your selection of your herbicides for burn down based on effectiveness. And then we just finished talking about water hemp, which is a problem on every acre. Uh, conventional till and no-till, uh, but with no-till a few other considerations that we we can uh, think of with water hemp. Things like the fact that our, our emergence pattern will be slightly different with water hemp and no-till versus in conventional till. Uh, herbicide programs are, are main, mainly the same, but really uh, kind of talking through just some of the problems with water hemp in more of a no-till situation or setting. Really focusing on no-till production challenges specifically related to weed management and no-till.